Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is AP Physics Calculus Mechanics. This is the 2015 AP Physics C exam. We're going through problem number one. So uh, th I think there's two problems that are very similar. Problem number one, problem number three, that are going to be very similar to things that you're going to see on this 2020 AP Physics C exam. So these are good problems. Uh, this first one is a laboratory problem. We have a, a block mass m it's projected up from the bottom of an inclined ramp it's got initial velocity of v naught and you can see the ramp has an angle theta with the horizontal and the block starts at a distance d from the motion sensor you can see they put motion sensors x is equal to zero it's starting at d it the block slides part way up the ramp stops before reaching the center and then slides right back down so this is a a laboratory question so we want to go through each part of this and make sure we are good. So you can see A1, uh, it's a variable problem. We're going to determine the acceleration of the block. And so we want to use Newton's second law. We want to say the, the net force is equal to mass times the acceleration. And what is the net force here is going to be what, if we think about our, our free body diagram, we have a normal force right here. We have a force of gravity, mg. And we have at our, um, uh, th there's no friction on here that we see. You can see it is uh, negligible friction. And so th this is what we have here in terms of our free body diagram. So think about it. We have a normal force here. We have a mass times gravity, which means, uh, keep in mind, that's our free body diagram. But remember that mass times gravity is split up into two components here. So what is the acceleration is, remember our angle is right over here. And so this one is mg sine of theta, mg sine of theta. And so what do we have here is our net force is equal to mg sine of theta. That's the only force working on it. That's the only force that's accelerating it. And so acceleration equals g sine of theta. Okay. So that's our answer to number one. Number one. Uh, number two, you can see it says de, uh, determine an expression for the velocity of the block. Well, what do you know is we have our V final equals V initial plus acceleration times time. And what do we know about our acceleration? Our, our V naught is, uh, we have to keep in mind uh, our signs here because we're dealing with vectors. Negative V naught, that V naught is going in the opposite direction. You can see. Uh, plus the acceleration is g sine of theta t, and that is the expression for the velocity of my block, the velocity of my block. And so uh, that's where we are. And then deter determine an expression for the position on the block. So this is number two. Number three, we're trying to find the position. And so what are we going to use? We're going to use our kinematic formula of x is equal to x naught plus v initial t plus one half a t squared okay and so my position equals what's my initial position is capital d my v naught is a uh, is negative v naught due to the direction of that vector plus one half what's my acceleration is going to be g sine of theta and we have t squared, and that is my expression for the position of the block. Okay, so this was all of a. Uh, a1 was worth one point. Uh, a2 was worth uh, one, uh, actually two points. Uh, one point for substitution of the kinematic equation. So developing my kinematic equation, one point for the answer, having the negative in there, and then one point for number three. So we have four total points for A, A1, A2, A3. And then we get to a little bit more a little bit more of the problem. We're going to derive an expression for the initial position x min, um, position minimum of the block when it's closest to the motion of the sensor. And we're going to express our equations again. So again, I'm going to use my kinematic equation. V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A, uh, change of my position. Okay, change of my position. And so my final velocity obviously is zero. That's when it reaches its maximum 
height there, and we have v naught squared uh, plus 2, and we have our g sine of theta, that's our acceleration, obviously, and what's my change in my position? My x minimum is what we're trying to find, minus my d, that's my change of my position, and so if I do a little bit of algebra here, um, we are going to see, as we move things around, we can see the x minimum is equal to that d minus our v naught squared over 2g sine of theta. And so that is my expression for the minimum position that, that I'm going to get. Uh, we get one point, one point for uh, our substitution of our, um, of our kinematic equation, 1.4 my answer of substituting everything correctly. So two points for B, two points for B. Then we move to uh, our C problem right here. Um, and you can see what they're saying is what's the, what are, what's going to happen to these graphs? What are these graphs going to look like? Now think about it. Our acceleration was constant. Okay, Our acceleration was equal to G sine of theta and it was a positive acceleration, so we have a positive constant acceleration. How are we going to get this positive line is we need a positive slope. It's going to start from a velocity in the negative and it will go to zero and then come back in the positive because it's coming back down the slide, which means how do we get this guy there? It is going to be our parabolic curve in the positive concave up there. And so we are going to get four points for this problem. Uh, four points for this problem. You get one point for the position graph. Uh, it can, it has to be a parabola. It cannot cross the, the time axis, and a vertex, vert, uh, and a vertex that does not touch the the t axis there. Okay, and so then you get a velocity that crosses the t axis, the time axis, and so we get one point for that. We get one point for horizontal line for acceleration, and uh, one point for consistency, consistency. So if you were consistently wrong, you might have still got a point there. So C was worth four points, four points. And now it says after the block slides down and leaves the bottom of the ramp, it slides on a horizontal surface with a coefficient of friction of uh, the coefficient, uh, coefficient of kinetic friction. And we want to derive an expression for the distance the block slides before it comes to a rest. Okay, and so again. We have, um, what's happening here is we have our equation that's going to be solve us for distance because at, when it's on that horizontal surface, there's only going to be one force working on it. Obviously, these forces of mass times gravity and normal force, they cancel out, but we really just have the force of friction. And so the net force is going to be equal to mass times acceleration, which is equal to negative of your friction. So we have mass times acceleration equals negative, and what's the equation for the force of friction? It's coefficient of friction times the normal force. What's your normal force equal to? It's your mg. Your m's cancel out, which means your acceleration is going to be equal to negative coefficient of kinetic friction times gravity, times gravity. Now, how are we going to, we, we can't use this acceleration, so we're going to have to use, uh, remember there's constant acceleration here, so we can ha find our v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a change of position and you can see change of position is going to be some value d that's what we're trying to find is this change of position here and so uh, you can see how I know my final velocity is going to be equal to 0 I have an initial velocity plus 2 times a I know what a is its negative coefficient of kinetic friction times gravity times D. And so you can see as I rearrange this equation, we're going to have D is equal to V naught squared over 2 co coefficient of kinetic friction times G. And that is the distance with which it would travel. Okay, And so we get one point, uh, one point for uh, getting kind of the kinematics, sorry, the, the dynamics equation, one point for substituting in the kinematics equation and getting your answer. Two points for your value of D. And then last but not least, suppose the ramp now has friction. Suppose the ramp now has friction. And you can see how the what, what we're going to do here, 
says the same block is projected up with the same initial speed v0 and comes back down the ramp and we are going to take a look at our graph okay we have a velocity graph we have time we have our t final divided by 2 we have our time here and so you can see how what's happening here is it looks very similar to my other graph there but what's going to happen on the second half because the ramp had friction it's going to change this slope this slope will not be as steep right there and so this graph is going to have two different portions one with a steeper graph and one with a less steep graph and so that is actually going to be worth three points uh, uh, one point four that's an ugly color right there sorry 1.4 having two straight line portions so you're going to have two straight line portions and you're going to get a point for a change uh, change of slope and having the kind of correct magnitudes there and you can see right here having that so you get 1.4 the changing of the slopes one slope less than the other the second half is less than the other and 1.4 making that change right there at t final divided by 2. So that was worth three points right there and that is the 2015 AP Physics C Mechanics exam number one.